Hello guys and welcome to another installment of A Computers and Technology. I had some technical difficulties this morning. I accidentally drained the battery last night on the solar system and I'm just waiting for it to recharge. That's why I'm not using the PyTob seed right now. I have a really interesting little mini computer that we're going to take a look at today. This is the Seneca NextLink Mini X10 Thin Client. Uh, this thing has a Intel Atom inside running at 1.6 gigahertz. I believe it's an N270. I really want to say it's the Intel Atom N270, uh, but I might be wrong about that don't quote me on that yet we will actually find out what processor this thing is rocking when we go into the bios it's also equipped with one gigabyte of ddr2 ram inside and something that i found particularly interesting about this system is that it has dedicated nvidia ion graphics installed so i do plan on installing windows 7 on this system just so we can get the proper drivers for that graphics chipset i hate we might be able to play some older games on this tiny little computer so i think that would be fun to check out i'll also grab a uh, linux distro probably Ubuntu or Lubuntu and we'll try to run that off a live USB flash drive on this system after we uh, check out the performance with Windows. In this video I'm going to uh, walk you around the system, I'm going to take it apart, tear it down, take a look inside and then we'll actually install Windows and Linux and check out performance. So without further ado let's go ahead and take a look around this thing. And if anyone's curious I bought this thing for $7.95 plus shipping off eBay. Currently there's still a couple left so if you guys want to get your hands on one of these I will put the link to it in the description. I will also place the link to the seller's store in the description as well. Now you're probably wondering why in the world I want to buy such a low powered machine like this. Well, if you've been following my uh, last couple videos and you know that I'm trying to migrate my web server over to solar power. And in order to do that, I need to downsize it to something that consumes a little less powerful. Currently, uh, my website is hosted on a Core 2 Duo machine and it consumes about 80 five watts at idle. This is advertised to consume a lot less power. Uh, I can't recall how much power this consumes on average off the top of my head. I have a watt meter in the back and I will pull that out uh, and we will actually grab the numbers after I finish this clip. Uh, but I think this thing uh, is advertised to consume about 15 watts at idle. Yeah, so this machine is a lot less power hungry. Granted, uh, it's definitely not as powerful as that Core 2 Duo machine, but my archive site really doesn't receive that much traffic. Uh, and it really doesn't need that much horsepower behind it. So now I just want to take a quick look around this thing. As you can see, the system is really compact. It's only seven inches high, six inches wide, and three fourths of an inch thick. On the front, we have two USB 2.0 ports and a headphone and audio jack on the side. As you can see, we have some ventilation, the next link logo, our power button, and various badges, along with some leftover sticker residue. Yes, I had some trouble removing the stickers that were slapped onto the side of this thing. And right here, you can see that we have four USB 2.0 ports, Ethernet out, uh, our power jack. This does not come with a power supply, but I already have one in the back that should work with this, and HDMI out as well. There's nothing really on this side except for a single rubber foot, and that's because you can place it upright like this, or you can place it on its side like this. And as far as the top and bottom are concerned, there's nothing really there, just some additional slots for ventilation. I don't see any screws on the outer casing, which means that this thing is probably held together by plastic clips, which always makes things fun when it comes to disassembly. Ah, let me see if I can get this thing apart. Yep, it was held together by plastic clips, and let me tell you guys, it was fun trying to get this thing apart, but as you can see, we are now inside the system, and I'll just give you guys a quick look at the back panel. Nothing really interesting there, and there's nothing really interesting here either. It's a pretty basic layout. A lot of these mini systems are passively cooled. As you can see, this one is not. We have a heatsink running to an outtake fan right here. Right below that, we have our gigabyte of DDR2 RAM mounted to the board, and right below that, we have a slot for an additional gigabyte of RAM, and I believe I have a stick of DDR2 RAM laying around somewhere so we'll try to throw that into this system before we boot it up into an operating system to the left you can see there's a space for a 2.5 inch hard drive i think these originally shipped with a drive caddy but it is now missing it's not really a big deal uh when i want to put a hard drive in this thing i'm just going to tape it down you know it's it you don't really need the drive caddy uh for this video i'm just going to be booting off a usb flash drive to make things easier but if i actually decide to put this into service i'll probably throw a small solid state drive in inside the system. Uh, our CMOS battery is right here. It was flapping around when I opened up the case 
case it was just you know flopping around all over the place uh, i went ahead and taped it back down where i guess it belongs there's a piece of tape right here so i just put it right on top of that and i'm trying to think of anything else that i should mention but there's really nothing else here to talk about so i'm gonna go ahead and throw this back to you know what i need to do the power on test first so now let's go ahead and see if this thing will power on as usual, I'm going to do the initial power on test on camera. Everything's ready to go. Let's plug the PC in and see if anything goes pop. All right, and it looks like we are good to go. It just went through the power on self test and it's looking for a boot device. So I did not expect this, but inside the system, we have an Intel Atom 330, which is a 64 bit processor running at 1.6 gigahertz with two cores and four threads. I thought this was just gonna be rocking one of those single core atoms. Uh, and that's why I didn't buy another one for free NAS. If I knew this had a dual core processor in it, I would have bought one for free NAS. And you know, unfortunately I just tried to buy another one and apparently they're all gone. So sorry guys I won't be able to put the link to this thing in the description I will still put the link to the seller's uh, store in the description though so you can go see if he has anything else similar to this I went ahead and threw that stick of RAM inside the system and it turns out that was a two gigabyte stick of DDR2 so we now have three gigabytes of RAM inside this system I'm gonna back out of here now that's all the uh, CPU specs right here I'm gonna take a look at some of the other settings in the BIOS I mean there's really nothing much here I'm gonna exit out of this in just a second and we'll try to boot this thing into Windows, uh, but just gonna navigate around here for a minute. Yeah, as you can see, nothing too interesting. Let's go ahead and get out of here and see if we can't get Windows running on this machine. All right guys, so I apologize, but the audio for the next couple of minutes is going to be on the lower side because my microphone does not reach all the way over here. But as you can see, I have Windows 7 Ultimate 32-bit edition installed on this system now. It is up and running. I installed all the necessary drivers, uh, the NVIDIA drivers for the graphics and the uh, chipset are installed that took quite a long time and please keep in mind that I am running this off a USB flash drive and I know some of you are going to ask why I just don't use my Adata SP550 solid state drive uh, well you know if I could I would but there's stuff on there right now that I need to get off uh, and I don't have time to do that right now um, so as you can see we have the NVIDIA control panel up version 34.964 R ion graphics just going to hit the device manager real quick and as you can see, even though we are running this off a USB flash drive, it's still relatively snappy. I'll pop open a task manager real quick so you guys can see what exactly we are doing. I have my watt meter uh, plugged into the wall and currently at idle. The system is drawing uh, only 20 watts. So yeah, definitely not bad on the power consumption side. You can see that at idle, we're only using 854 megabytes of that three gigabytes of RAM on this system. I'll just click through here. I mean, we hit most of the stuff when we uh, went into the BIOS display adapter there's a nvidia ion uh what else is here i mean there's really nothing else um i have actually already tried to play some games on it and games work surprisingly well far cry 3 blood dragon one work i had issues getting that to work so i'm not going to demo that but i did get halo combat evolved and portal up and running on this system um, so I will demo those for you guys. I'm going to leave both these open. We'll try to demo the system's multitasking capabilities right now. Just going to pop open an in instance of Chrome. And that didn't take very long at all. Uh, so now we want to get out of there. So we'll just hit a couple sites right now. Just show you how this works as a web browsing machine. It is a little bit on the sluggish side. Uh, sites can take a little long to load. Um, as you can see, just popped open YouTube. And now only cook. Oh my goodness. As you guys can clearly hear, sound is working. Just gonna turn that down so you can hear me rambling on over here. So as you can see, yeah, we are dropping a frame here and there at 720p video at 60 FPS, but for the most part, it actually is watchable. Not too bad at all coming uh, from a system that, you know, you would expect wouldn't be able to do too much. Uh, I'll get out of this. We'll try to visit a couple other sites right now. I will go to my primary site, which is www.aacomputersandtechnology.com. Here we go. And we're just going to load that up. Yeah, and as you can see, that took only a few seconds. I'll visit a site that's not mine. Let's go to the Associated Press. 
And you know, I'm trying to make this kind of short because I know this does get boring for you guys after a while. I'd rather just kind of skip over this and uh, get to the gaming because I think that's probably the part that you guys are most interested in. But I know some people out there are still interested in how this performs as your day-to-day uh, -day productivity machine, you know, web browsing, uh, word processing. And speaking of word processing, why don't I just open uh, WordPad, W-O-R-D-P-A-D, WordPad. And oh my goodness, that did not, what, what's up? Come on. There we go, WordPad. And we'll just type some stuff out, manipulate some text, and I'll type in that good old generic phrase, hello, YouTube. And we will play around with this. I'll just make it a little bit bigger, change the font size, change the font type, italicize it, underline it, make it bold, and that's all good there. So we will close out of this. Um, that's really all I want to demo as far as the web browsing is concerned. I'm going to close out of this as well and all of these. And let's go ahead and see what this thing can run as far as games are concerned. All right, and here we are. Halo is up and running on this PC. And look how smooth that background animation is. I have the video settings set to max. As you can see, resolution is set to the max resolution. Everything's turned on. And all the other settings are set to high. So what I'm going to do now is go to a multiplayer game and just play around for a little bit. Check out that frame rate. That is a nice, smooth 30 frames per second on this little Atom machine. And this is one of those games that, you know, I always like to go back to. Uh, always super enjoyable to play. As you can see, I'm just playing here by myself, but still, uh, I do enjoy it. And, you know, I would go into campaign, but then that just takes a long time to set everything up, and I'd rather not deal with it uh, during this video. So just hop into Warthog, and you can see the uh, snow particle effects under the tires aren't slowing anything down. And even though this is a pretty old game, I still think it's pretty impressive that it plays well on this uh, tiny little system. Now let's opt to try something just a little bit newer. As you can see, I have Portal open right now. I did have to drop the resolution down to 768 by 992 because at 1080p, the frame rate was just a little bit too low for my taste. But I left all the other settings at high. Let's just jump into a game real quick and see how that performs. So as you can see, with these settings, we're getting about 20 to 25 frames per second. Uh, not exactly super smooth, but it is playable. I'm just going to mess around in here for a little bit so you guys can get a better idea of the uh, general playability of this game. Impossible. Make no attempt to solve it. Whoa, whoa, all right. <laughs> I mean, we are running games on this after all, but some things in here can get pretty toasty. As you can see, the CPU heat sink sitting around 135 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 57 degrees Celsius, and then the chips on the RAM are getting even hotter. We don't have any heat sinks on those, so that's sitting around 75 degrees Celsius. So, yeah, that's a little bit hot in this system, but I'm not too worried because, once again, this is just going to be running as a web server. Uh, definitely not going to be running uh, anything as taxing as Portal or Halo on it. 
I have to leave soon, but before I do, let's take a quick look at Lubuntu 16.04 running on this system. Now, I usually opt to go with Zubuntu 16.04, but I just had Lubuntu laying around, uh, so it just made things easier for me to go with Lubuntu. As you can see, uh, memory usage is a lot lower than with Windows. We're only using 288 megabytes of memory at idle. Now, uh, once again, you need to keep in mind that this is running off a USB flash drive, so things are going to be a bit sluggish. Just popped open Firefox, and yeah, it is on the slower side. Uh, performance is about the same as with Windows, uh, except the memory footprint is a little bit lower. So just navigate to mywebsite.com. And as you can see, yeah, it's usable, pretty snappy, but does take a little bit for uh, some of the other stuff to load up, like the ads and some of the images. Scrolling is on the jerky side, but it's definitely bearable, and overall, it's pretty usable. I'm just going to minimize this, and we'll have a go at some multitasking. I'll just open up A by Word, and why not Gnumeric at the same time? So there goes A by Word. Let's just pop that open, and Gnumeric's probably going to overlay this in just a second. No, actually, it didn't. Uh, but we'll go back to A by Word, just type in some text, just like we did with Windows. H-E-L-O-O. -O. Whoa! And that... <laughs> That is a weird little bug right there. Check that out. I'm not sure if that's coming out on camera or not, but uh, the top of the screen is flashing around all over the place. That's interesting. Well, hello, YouTube. Oh my goodness, I can't stay. <laughs> oh, that didn't work out. Uh, I'm not going to stay on this too long because that's actually starting to give me a headache. That's really annoying there. Uh, close out saving, uh, but Gnumeric's not doing that, which is weird. Uh, it's just A by word. And as you can see, I'll just go into one of these cells and manipulate it, so I'll do the exact same thing. Hello, YouTube. And that's working just fine. I can highlight all these cells, manipulate the font within the cells. So I'll just change that and make it bold. If I can highlight it, there we go, make it bold, italicize it, underline it, and that's all good there. So I'm gonna close out this, no discard. And really, that's all the time I want to take on Linux because I do have to go now. All right, guys, so that's going to be about it for this video. I forgot to mention this, but the internal fan's actually really quiet. I didn't notice it throughout the entire video. Yes, it is working properly. Um, you know, I was I was actually really impressed with the performance from this little PC. I'm not sure if I'm going to use it as my free NAS box or the web server because I do have another thin client right here. Here's a little sneak peek of what's coming up. Uh, this is one of those HP thin clients. I believe this one has that uh, single core atom in it. But the interesting thing about this one is that it has a full-size PCI Express slot. Um, which is a big advantage over this one. So I could throw in like a RAID card or something with several SATA ports on it and hook up several drives directly to the motherboard. Um, so yeah, it will be really interesting to open this one up. I probably post a video on this next week but that's gonna be about it for this video if you have any questions comments or concerns you can go ahead and post a comment in the comment section don't forget to drop a like on this video if you didn't like this video please tell me why and of course please don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel if you want to support me you can use my amazon or ebay affiliate links you can also support me by checking out my patreon all those links will be in the description and of course please don't forget to drop a like on the facebook page thanks for watching guys and i'll see you in the next installment of a computers and technology